A crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses the mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of piezoelectric material to create an electrical signal with a precise frequency. This frequency is commonly used to keep track of time, as in quartz wristwatches, to provide a stable clock signal for digital integrated circuits, and to stabilize frequencies for radio transmitters and receivers. The most common type of piezoelectric resonator used is the quartz crystal, so oscillator circuits incorporating and became known as crystal oscillators. But other piezoelectric materials including polycrystalline ceramics are used in similar circuits. Quartz crystals are manufactured for frequencies from a few tens of kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. More than 2 billion crystals are manufactured annually. Most are used for consumer devices such as wristwatches, clocks, radios, computers, and cell phones. Quartz crystals are also found inside test and measurement equipment, such as counters, signal generators, and oscilloscopes. Terminology A crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses a piezoelectric resonator, a crystal as its frequency-determining element. Crystal is the common term used in electronics for the frequency-determining component. A wafer of quartz crystal or ceramic with electrodes connected to it. A more accurate term for it is piezoelectric resonator. Crystals are also used in other types of electronic circuits, such as crystal filters. Piezoelectric resonators Crystals are sold as separate components for use in crystal oscillator circuits. An example is shown in the picture. They are also often incorporated in a single package with the crystal oscillator circuit, shown on the right-hand side. History Piezoelectricity was discovered by Jacques and Pierre Curie in 1880. Paul Langevin first investigated quartz resonators for use in sonar during World War I. The first crystal-controlled oscillator, using a crystal of Rochelle salt, was built in 1917 and patented in 1918 by Alexander M. Nicholson at Bell Telephone Laboratories, although his priority was disputed by Walter Guyton and K.D. K.D. built the first quartz crystal oscillator in 1921. Other early innovators in quartz crystal oscillators include G. W. Pierce and Lewis Esson. Quartz crystal oscillators were developed for high stability frequency references during the 1920s and 1930s. Prior to crystals, radio stations controlled their frequency with tuned circuits, which could easily drift off frequency by 3 to 4 kHz. Since broadcast stations were assigned frequencies only 10 kHz apart, interference between adjacent stations due to frequency drift was a common problem. In 1925 Westinghouse installed a crystal oscillator in its flagship station KDKA, and by 1926 quartz crystals were used to control the frequency of many broadcasting stations and were popular with amateur radio operators. In 1928, Warren Marison of Bell Telephone Laboratories developed the first quartz crystal clock, with accuracies of up to one sec in 30 years. Quartz clocks replaced precision pendulum clocks as the world's most accurate timekeepers until atomic clocks were developed in the 1950s. Using the early work at Bell Labs, AT&T eventually established their Frequency Control Products Division, later spun off and known today as Vectron International. A number of firms started producing quartz crystals for electronic use during this time. Using what are now considered primitive methods, about 100,000 crystal units were produced in the United States during 1939. Through World War II crystals were made from natural quartz crystal, virtually all from Brazil. Shortages of crystals during the war caused by the demand for accurate frequency control of military and naval radios and radars spurred post-war research into culturing synthetic quartz, and by 1950 a hydrothermal process for growing quartz crystals on a commercial scale was developed at Bell Laboratories. By the 1970s virtually all crystals used in electronics were synthetic. In 1968, 
Jürgen Storzer invented a photolithographic process for manufacturing quartz crystal oscillators while working at North American Aviation that allowed them to be made small enough for portable products like watches. Although crystal oscillators still most commonly use quartz crystals, devices using other materials are becoming more common, such as ceramic resonators. Operation. A crystal is a solid in which the constituent atoms, molecules, or ions are packed in a regularly ordered, repeating pattern extending in all three spatial dimensions. Almost any object made of an elastic material could be used like a crystal, with appropriate transducers. Since all objects have natural resonant frequencies of vibration, for example, steel is very elastic and has a high speed of sound. It was often used in mechanical filters before quartz. The resonant frequency depends on size, shape, elasticity, and the speed of sound in the material. High-frequency crystals are typically cut in the shape of a simple, rectangular plate. Low-frequency crystals, such as those used in digital watches, are typically cut in the shape of a tuning fork. For applications, not needing very precise timing, a low-cost ceramic resonator is often used in place of a quartz crystal. When a crystal of quartz is properly cut and mounted, it can be made to distort in an electric field by applying a voltage to an electrode near or on the crystal. This property is known as electrostriction or inverse piezoelectricity. When the field is removed, the quartz generates an electric field as it returns to its previous shape, and this can generate a voltage. The result is that a quartz crystal behaves like an RLC circuit, composed of an inductor, capacitor and resistor, with a precise resonant frequency. Quartz has the further advantage that its elastic constants and its size change in such a way that the frequency dependence on temperature can be very low. The specific characteristics depend on the mode of vibration and the angle at which the quartz is cut. Therefore, the resonant frequency of the plate, which depends on its size, does not change much. This means that a quartz clock, filter or oscillator remains accurate. For critical applications the quartz oscillator is mounted in a temperature-controlled container, called a crystal oven, and can also be mounted on shock absorbers to prevent perturbation by external mechanical vibrations. Modeling. Electrical model A quartz crystal can be modeled as an electrical network with a low impedance and a high impedance resonance points spaced closely. Together, mathematically, the impedance of this network can be written as, or where S is the complex frequency resonance frequency to decrease. Adding inductance across a crystal causes the resonance frequency to increase. These effects can be used to adjust the frequency at which a crystal oscillates. Crystal manufacturers normally cut and trim their crystals to have a specified resonance frequency with a known load capacitance added to the crystal. For example, a crystal intended for a 6 picofarads load has its specified parallel resonance frequency when a 6.0 picofarads capacitor is placed across it. Without the load capacitance, the resonance frequency is higher. Resonance mode A quartz crystal provides both series and parallel resonance. The series resonance is a few kilohertz lower than the parallel one. Crystals below 30 MHz are generally operated between series and parallel resonance, which means that the crystal appears as an inductive reactance in operation. This inductance forming a parallel resonant circuit with externally connected parallel capacitance. Any small additional capacitance in parallel with the crystal pulls the frequency lower. Moreover, the effective inductive reactance of the crystal can be reduced by adding a capacitor in series with the crystal. This latter technique can provide a useful method of trimming the oscillatory frequency within a narrow range, in this case inserting a capacitor in series with the crystal raises the frequency of oscillation. For a crystal to operate at its specified frequency, the electronic circuit has to be exactly that specified by the crystal manufacturer. Note that these points imply a subtlety concerning crystal oscillators in this frequency range. 
The crystal does not usually oscillate at precisely either of its resonant frequencies. Crystals above 30 MHz are generally operated at series resonance where the impedance appears at its minimum and equal to the series resistance. For these crystals the series resistance is specified instead of the parallel capacitance. To reach higher frequencies, a crystal can be made to vibrate at one of its overtone modes which occur near multiples of the fundamental resonant frequency. Only odd-numbered overtones are used. Such a crystal is referred to as a third, fifth, or even seventh overtone crystal. To accomplish this, the oscillator circuit usually includes additional LC circuits to select the desired overtone. Temperature affects a crystal's frequency characteristic depends on the shape or cut of the crystal. A tuning fork crystal is usually cut such that its frequency over temperature is a parabolic curve centered around 25 degrees Celsius. This means that a tuning fork crystal oscillator resonates close to its target frequency at room temperature but slows when the temperature either increases or decreases from room temperature. A common parabolic coefficient for a 32 kHz tuning fork crystal is minus 0.04 ppm degree C squared. In a real application, this means that a clock built using a regular 32 kHz tuning fork crystal keeps good time at room temperature but loses 2 minutes per year at 10 degrees Celsius above or below room temperature and loses 8 minutes per year at 20 degrees Celsius above or below room temperature due to the quartz crystal. Crystal oscillator circuits The crystal oscillator circuit sustains oscillation by taking a voltage signal from the quartz resonator, amplifying it, and feeding it back to the resonator. The rate of expansion and contraction of the quartz is the resonant frequency, and is determined by the cut and size of the crystal. When the energy of the generated output frequencies matches the losses in the circuit, an oscillation can be sustained. An oscillator crystal has two electrically conductive plates, with a slice or tuning fork of quartz crystal sandwiched between them. During startup, the controlling circuit places the crystal into an unstable equilibrium, and due to the positive feedback in the system, any tiny fraction of noise is amplified, ramping up the oscillation. The crystal resonator can also be seen as a highly frequency selective filter in this system. It only passes a very narrow subband of frequencies around the resonant one, attenuating everything else. Eventually, only the resonant frequency is active. As the oscillator amplifies the signals coming out of the crystal, the signals in the crystal's frequency band become stronger, eventually dominating the output of the oscillator. The narrow resonance band of the quartz crystal filters out all the unwanted frequencies. The output frequency of a quartz oscillator can be either that of the fundamental resonance or of a multiple of that resonance called a harmonic frequency. Harmonics are an exact integer, multiple of the fundamental frequency. But, like many other mechanical resonators, crystals exhibit several modes of oscillation, usually at approximately odd integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. These are termed overtone modes, and oscillator circuits can be designed to excite them. The overtone modes are at frequencies which are approximate, but not exact odd integer multiples of that of the fundamental mode, and overtone frequencies are therefore not exact harmonics of the fundamental. High frequency crystals are often designed to operate at third, fifth, or seventh overtones. Manufacturers have difficulty producing crystals thin enough to produce fundamental frequencies over 30 MHz. To produce higher frequencies, manufacturers make overtone crystals tuned to put the third, fifth, or seventh overtone at the desired frequency. Because they are thicker and therefore easier to manufacture than a fundamental crystal that would produce the same frequency, although exciting the desired overtone frequency requires a slightly more complicated oscillator circuit. A fundamental crystal oscillator circuit is simpler and more efficient and has more pullability than a third overtone circuit. 
Depending on the manufacturer, the highest available fundamental frequency may be 25 MHz to 66 MHz. A major reason for the wide use of crystal oscillators is their high Q factor. A typical Q value for a quartz oscillator ranges from 104 to 106, compared to perhaps 102 for an LC oscillator. The maximum Q for a high-stability quartz oscillator can be estimated as Q equals 1.6 times 107 F, where F is the resonance frequency in megahertz. One of the most important traits of quartz crystal oscillators is that they can exhibit very low phase noise. In many oscillators, any spectral energy at the resonant frequency is amplified by the oscillator, resulting in a collection of tones at different phases. In a crystal oscillator, the crystal mostly vibrates in one axis, therefore only one phase is dominant. This property of low-phase noise makes them particularly useful in telecommunications where stable signals are needed, and in scientific equipment where very precise time references are needed. Environmental changes of temperature, humidity, pressure, and vibration can change the resonant frequency of a quartz crystal, but there are several designs that reduce these environmental effects. These include the TCXO, MCXO, and OCXO which are defined below. These designs, particularly the OCXO, often produce devices with excellent short-term stability. The limitations in short-term stability are due mainly to noise from electronic components in the oscillator circuits. Long-term stability is limited by aging of the crystal, due to aging and environmental factors. It is difficult to keep even the best quartz oscillators within one part in 1010 of their nominal frequency without constant adjustment. For this reason, atomic oscillators are used for applications requiring better long-term stability and accuracy. Spurious frequencies for crystals operated at series resonance or pulled away from the main mode by the inclusion of a series inductor or capacitor. Significant spurious responses may be experienced, though most spurious modes are typically some tens of kilohertz above the wanted series resonance. Their temperature coefficient is different from the main mode and the spurious response may move through the main mode at certain temperatures. Even if the series resistances at the spurious resonances appear higher than the one it wanted frequency a rapid change in the main mode series. Resistance can occur at specific temperatures when the two frequencies are coincidental. A consequence of these activity dips is that the oscillator may lock at a spurious frequency at specific temperatures. This is generally minimized by ensuring that the maintaining circuit has insufficient gain to activate unwanted modes. Spurious frequencies are also generated by subjecting the crystal to vibration. This modulates the resonance frequency to a small degree by the frequency of the vibrations. SC cut crystals are designed to minimize the frequency effect of mounting stress and they are therefore less sensitive to vibration. Acceleration effects including gravity are also reduced with SC cut crystals as is frequency change with time due to long-term mounting stress. Variation There are disadvantages with SC cut shear mode crystals such as the need for the maintaining oscillator to discriminate against other closely related unwanted modes and increased frequency change due to temperature when subject to a full ambient range. SC cut crystals are most advantageous where temperature control at their temperature of zero temperature coefficient is possible. Under these circumstances an overall stability performance from premium units can approach the stability of rubidium frequency standards. Commonly used crystal frequencies Crystals can be manufactured for oscillation over a wide range of frequencies, from a few kilohertz up to several hundred megahertz. Many applications call for a crystal oscillator frequency conveniently related to some other desired frequency. So hundreds of standard crystal frequencies are made in large quantities and stocked by electronics distributors. 
For example, many non-television applications use 3.579545 MHz crystals since they are made in large quantities for NTSC color television receivers, using frequency dividers, frequency multipliers and phase-locked loop circuits. It is practical to derive a wide range of frequencies from one reference frequency.